Hi everyone, so this video is coming to, to you from my beautiful car and um, I've just stolen a moment. Um, I'm actually doing some high school teaching today, that's another thing that I do to keep us financially afloat. And um, so I'm just on my lunch break and I thought I would answer one of the questions that's come in over the past week from Susie. So let me just read to you what she's written here in her email. She says, Hi Anthea, I have a few questions for you. Hope it is okay to ask you, but if you don't want to answer, then I understand. How did you eat from beginning till now in your raw journey? You can kind of give a summary if you don't want to go into detail. Um, but I would like to know how your raw diet changed or didn't change from beginning middle to now. I really like your simple way of eating and would like to eat that way, but is this attainable from the beginning or does one need to have more to add more fat in the beginning? That's why I asked the above question. Also, do you still slip up in eating this way? And then what foods do you start eating? Then is it easy for you to get back on this way of eating simple raw foods? What cravings um, did you have in the beginning and how and what did you do to overcome it? Do you eat flax, chia or anything else for omega-3s? And what are some other sources of omega-3 if one cannot eat seeds and nuts? Uh, what percentage of fat and protein do you eat? Okay, some really good questions there, Susie. So, um, just so I can, so, okay, so I've been eating this way for about six years, um, and I started uh, by reading the 80-10-10, the 80-10-10 diet by Dr. Douglas Graham, um, which basically recommends a high fruit, 80% um, or above, um, of calories coming from carbohydrates and low fat, low protein. So 10% or lower for both protein and fat. Um, so I started eating that way and I think from the beginning I was pretty sporadic in the way that I ate. I tended to graze through the day um, and I had quite a bit of success in the beginning um, and I felt really amazing and I healed a lot of my health conditions. But at some point, my addictive eating um, led me back to eating flour and sugar products. Um, so in answer to your question about what um, did I go back to, it was always flour and sugar products that, um, that flipped me back into addictive eating and pulled me off the path. Um, so yeah, it's been a rocky road for six years and, um, I would say I've been more on than off, but there have been periods of time when I've really, really struggled to get back on, um, and I've needed to find support for my addictive eating to get that back under control. Um, what were some of the other questions that you asked? Um, so... Yeah, so from the beginning, um, I ate always ate low fat. I have dabbled with trying higher fat. Um, my limit really, I've come to learn, is about 15% of fat in my diet. When I eat more than that, I just feel a real loss of energy and I prefer to keep it really low fat. Um, and I really like the simple way of eating that I've adopted. So in the beginning, I was trying lots of different raw food recipes and my taste buds were zinging and um, yeah, I was just in the kitchen a lot experimenting and I found it quite time consuming and I also found that my head was very involved in making lots of recipes and things like that, which... Um, which kind of, you know, I like I, the way that I am today, I prefer to have less of a focus on food and more of a focus on just living my life and really enjoying that. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's what I prefer to do now. Um, in terms of slipping up, um, yes, occasionally I do slip up. I had I'm on about day 40 now, very clean, raw, vegan, bright lines. But prior to that, I had 
you know, a pretty bad relapse um, just prior to the summit when things were very stressful and um, my food addiction was triggered. So, so yes, I am a food addict and I do go back to eating things that I don't want to be eating from time to time. But I would say on the whole that in the direction I'm moving is a very healthy direction and I know now what my body um, what the fuel my body really enjoys running on and I know um, how to keep away from those addictive foods as well and the bright the bright lines really help me with that um, let's see I do eat chia flax seeds and hemp seeds um, for omega-3s actually chia and flax are the ones for omega-3s um, and I do eat lots of leafy green vegetables. So if you can't eat seeds, then you're really looking at leafy green vegetables um, or a supplement um, for omega-3s. Um, best if you can eat seeds. And if you're worried about digestive issues with seeds, grinding them up is the best way of dealing with that problem. If you grind them, put them in smoothies, they make a, a nice gel-like um, texture which actually binds to all sorts of toxins in the digestive system and moves those through so um, yeah so that would be one way of dealing with div diverticulitis and that sort of thing um, and my percentage of fat and protein is is right now is is below 10 percent and I'm feeling fantastic eating that way so I'm not saying that that won't increase over time. It may well. Right now, I feel the best that way. Um, uh, and the last thing was, can you ask me if um, if you could start eating this way right from the beginning? And I would say absolutely. That simple eating of raw foods is the best way of eating. It's the healthiest way of eating. Um, you will get variety throughout the course of the months and the years you don't have to get worry about getting all sorts of variety in each meal so um yeah just just go for it and um you know one thing that you might want to do is actually plan your meals because otherwise you can fall victim to just eating whatever's in front of you and if you're under eating the tendency to overeat will be greater so I hope that answers your question, Susie. Great questions. Thanks so much for sending them in. And I will sign off for now. Bye, everyone.